Everyone, Shane Green here. I'm the Culture Hacker. So it's that time of the year. You know that time, you know, everybody's in it. We're, we're all about to do it. We take stock of the year that's almost done. Uh, we think about maybe some of those personal improvements we've got to make for our future. And of course, set ourselves some great goals to be in a better position for the new year. We all know it. We've all been there. In fact, we are there right now. Listen, it's an exciting time for sure, but unfortunately, that excitement often doesn't last. Because you see, to achieve great things for next year, we have to deal with one of our biggest challenges, our obstacles, ourselves. You see, I believe the reason that we are often aren't successful at making changes and achieving goals is that we just don't have the energy and then the discipline to get the things done that needs to be done. As a leader who drives improved performance, we have to start by reflecting on our own habits, our ability to harness that necessary energy every day to be a good leader. You know, the one who inspires the hearts and minds of others to be at their best and to want to do the things that we want them to do. You see, I believe a leader must consider their own physical and mental health first in order to inspire all the people in their lives. So what I wanted to do as we head into the new year is give you my top four leadership habits that I want you to consider getting right now before you head into that new year. The first one is start your day out right. Listen, for many people, the sound of a blaring alarm clock is their welcome to the new day. Think about it. Have you ever considered how that stress of being jolted awake affects your physical and mental health only in, not only in the moment, but for the rest of the day? How can that be a great start to your day? I would consider replacing that alarm with maybe your favorite song or natural sound to wake up with in the morning. I promise you after a few weeks, your subconscious will actually look forward to each and every new day. Next, if you're starting your morning out right, make sure you step into natural light soon after waking up. Sunlight, remember, is nature's way of letting your body know it's time to get going, time to get moving. And of course, the final piece of advice for starting your day out right is to make sure you have something for breakfast. Now listen, I know we're all on intermittent fasting, you know, the whole keto kind of diet, all of these things, I don't know, everything seems to sort of be about a new trend. And well, listen, for someone who's tried it all, I can tell you something, having a great breakfast to start your day just makes me feel better. It gives me the energy I need. Depending on which latest dietary research you're reading, uh, there's still plenty of evidence that suggests breakfast is the most important meal of our day. Because why? Because it lets your body know that there's going to be plenty of calories to take on whatever is put in front of it, whatever task you've got planned, so it doesn't need to conserve energy. When our body conserves energy, it's really hard to get things started. A quality breakfast is influential in our ability to concentrate throughout the day and listen, maintain a balanced emotional state. I promise you, all of that is really important to be a great leader. The second thing is, remember, stay active at work. Now, I know many of you will have a great New Year's resolution to get more time in the gym, exercise more. It seems every year we go through the same sort of performance. But by the end of January, most people's enthusiasm for exercise is probably long forgotten. You see, one of the best ways to sustain the necessary energy as a leader to be your best is to, of course, engage your body with a little activity. And one area I'm a big proponent of is make sure you get some exercise in at work. Listen, us humans, we're not made to sit at a desk all day, and yet that's precisely what many of us managers do. I think you need to break up your daily routines by standing up to do some of your work. Do more of that MBWA, remember? Management by walking around. The walking around is key. And taking time every couple of hours to stretch and stimulate that blood circulation. I believe remaining active at work is a great way to stay energized and be at your best. So start thinking about your daily work routine. How can you get some activity in? My third piece of advice is you've got to learn to take proper breaks in the new year. I learned about Australian rhythms years ago playing sports. If you have no idea what they are, look them up. Please pay attention. Ultradian rhythms occur regularly throughout your day, generally every 90 to 120 minutes. And it's important you know about these. The thing to know is that within every ultradian rhythm, our body has some sort of agreement. The agreement is to give us all the energy we need for as long as it takes to fulfill that cycle, say 90 minutes. But it requires you to give your body and your mind a bit of a break after you. Now, I've seen and heard the reaction some of you are probably going through right now. I don't need a break every two hours and neither do my employees. That would be horrible for productivity and efficiency. Listen, I get it. I also come from work environments where it's expected that you work 10, 12, 16 hours a day. 
While we may have received that badge of being the hardest worker, can you honestly say that once you surpass 10 hours that you are still delivering quality work? The reality is without proper breaks, fatigue toxins and stress hormones flush our bodies. And that builds up over the day to the point where we just can't wait to get home and collapse on the couch, do nothing. Well, unfortunately, many of us have important responsibilities at home as well. So that to, to just check out and to just collapse is just not an option. So what we need to do is to take regular and proper breaks to avoid the stress and fatigue building up over a period of time. What that does is not only gives you energy throughout your day at work, but also make sure you've got some energy at home as well. So every few hours, get up from your desk, stretch a little, walk outside, drink some cold water, eat a snack, but whatever you do, please take your breaks. And then my fourth one, which is is sort of connected with that, is learn to disconnect from your tech. When you take a break, step away from your computer, phone, or whatever it is else that's attached to you. While the world seems to demand that we stay connected all the time, plenty of research is now suggesting that we are more productive and healthy when we get to disk disconnect a little bit every day. I've met many managers who claim to support their employees' work-life balance by getting them home after eight hours, only to require that they remain available and work at home for all hours of the night, honestly causing even greater work-life imbalance. I'm a big believer in knowing when you're at your smartest, generally four or five hours after getting up. This is one of the best times for you to take on projects, get creative, or just think. For me, from 10 a.m. to noon every day, I generally shut the door, don't answer calls or emails, nothing that will get in the way of my thinking. And when I take a break, I leave my phone at my desk. I also try to ensure that breakfast and dinner at home are completely tech-free meals, ensuring more conversation interaction with my family and friends. Listen, none of this is easy, but these four key habits will help you set up a great new year. It will allow you to take on the world, change the world, and inspire all those people that are most important to you. And remember, you can't do any of that unless you're willing to change and inspire yourself first. We coach many executives on their personal leadership mindset and habits. So don't hesitate to reach out if you've got some questions for me or want to learn more. But most importantly, I just want to wish you a great start to the new year. And I most importantly, I want to make sure it's your best year yet. So good luck, take care, and remember my four tips. Cheers.